Photography is at a point where you basically have to try to find a camera system that doesn't have 24 megapixel options in a satiating ecosystem of lenses. APS-C in particular has long been at the point where it is no longer the slouch. Fujifilm leads innovation in this format and has offerings that would give anybody in any budget their money's worth. Yet, on the internet, on applications that would have underpaid you anyway, full frame is the standard. And I wish I could tell you why. Because for the average photographer, even many above average photographers, there's few benefits to shooting full frame. And especially in the case of street photography, if you've been convinced that a full frame system is the next step to better photographs, my friend, you've been misled. The benefits of full frame usually consist of what few things. There's really only three big ones shallower depth of field, better image quality, and pro features. Now because of your settings in street photography, you often have so much depth of field that sparingly is the word shallow anywhere in your lexicon. There's a lot of street photography tip videos out there and we all have varying advice, but one thing that we unanimously agree upon is that f5.6 and higher increases your chances of success. It deepens the depth of field and it makes it easier to get something as spontaneous as a street in focus. A shallow depth of field isn't a bad thing, it's a stylistic choice, much like anything is, but f5.0 and below often make it harder to nail sharp focus while also diluting context about your city in the process. We already know because you've seen my street photography gear you don't need video, that the bigger your gear, the more it tends to get in your way. These f1.4, 1.2 lenses often come with a size trade-off. For the weight and price of a 35 1.4 lens alone from Sony or Sigma, you could have an X100 F or V, an XE or XT double digit body, compact systems practically made for street photography and get a couple lenses to go with them. There's dedicated bodies in the Fujifilm system or even the Ricoh GR system, this is not a Fuji sponsored video, that'll grant you the best ergonomics and most necessary functions for the task. The X100 and X Pro cameras are nowhere near as feature rich as your price equivalent full frame camera, but they have all the necessary features through their reductionist approaches. But after your purchase of a cost effective APS-C kit, you're worried that you compromised on image quality. Now what's 26 or 32 to a 61 megapixel A7R4? But let me tell you this. A 26 megapixel sensor is enough to print at 11 by 14 for over 400 DPI and 16 by 20 for nearly 300. Actually, you know, here's a little exercise. I want you to go to your nearest art museum, the one that has all of the older folks who are championed for their work. How many of those prints are larger than 11 by 14? Larger than 16 by 20? It's kind of crazy how it's almost none of them, right? Thinking that more than 26 megapixels will result in better street photographs is kind of understandable, but we're approaching a day where full frame will no longer have that exclusive claim. It just doesn't matter because sparingly does anybody print that large so that they can take advantage of it. And I don't know about you, but I haven't even printed out enough 11 by 14s to start worrying about 30 by 40s. We bought the 26 megapixel compact APS-C camera with the small lens to match because around here we know that wrist health is important and we understand that less is more in street photography. But out of the corner of our eye, somebody struts past us with a camera that has a 30 frame burst rate, a built-in grip, nuclear atom-based autofocus, and four SD card slots. Before you watch this video, you might have just packed up your camera and left out of embarrassment. But we know better now because none of those will do you any good in street photography. I'm sure that the Nikon Z7 II, A7R 3 or 4, Canon R6, and a slew of other cameras have pro features that'll make our heads spin. In 2020, I sold my beloved X-H1 at a loss, mind you, for it. Now being two years wiser, I know that in street photography, the Z6 didn't do anything the X-H1 already could do. So I pay the premium when there's cameras that are stripped of any unnecessary elements, like offerings from Fuji and Rico that are purely designed for the cause. It's often not features that make a camera better for street photography. It's reductions, smaller body, smaller lenses, slower aperture. These full frame cameras do have amazing features, but these benefits tend to only exist in other genres of photography. I want a Leica Q2 just as much as anyone who's ever lived, but what does a Leica Q do that the XC4 or X Pro 3 with the 18 1.4 can't do for less? That the X100V can't do for less? The answer is be in stock. <laughs> no, but do, do you see where I'm going with this? And I'm not here to say that people shouldn't buy whatever they want. Buy what makes you happy. 
My overarching point is that street photography has an extremely low equipment barrier for entry, probably the lowest out of any genre of photography. And we, the photographers, tend to be the ones that create these glass ceilings. You can use nearly anything to get started in street photography It become excellent using that same thing. And after that, once you have your grasp, it's completely a matter of preference. But with that all being said, I'm closing this video out. Like, subscribe if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment if you have something to say. And I'll see you in the next one.